super excited to be here to share with you a little bit about uh, our platform thinking. You know, I work in um, uh, CTO organization in American Express Technologies. Um, I lead teams building frameworks and platforms for developers to build their business applications on. And one of the core platforms we have is called a function, not the name, but it's, it's a functional service platform. I want to share with you a little bit our thinking, platform thinking in terms of what this platform is providing for the developers and uh, uh, what makes it tick and how can we take it to the next level with Wasm and what Wasm has to offer to uh, kind of really elevate the experience there. Um, so, to begin with, this uh, function as a service platform is really an ecosystem. Uh, it does platform in terms of it frees developers from all the cross-cutting concerns. They don't need to worry about uh, servers, how, where my server is running or where my application is running, um, managing the infrastructure, CI/CD pipelines, observability, all these things come out of the box. So to write an enterprise hello world, you all know how what all we have to think about. You know, before you get to really doing the meat of the work, which is the business logic, all these cross-cutting concerns are taken care of the, by the platform, so the developers can just write to business. Uh, it's also a framework. Uh, we encourage a, um, we encourage contract first development. So every function exposes um, a specific contract that can be used to interact with it. And uh, we also provide uh, language-specific runtimes. So today we support Java and Kotlin with a JVM-based runtime. We have a Node.js-based runtime for JavaScript and TypeScript. And uh, we have some opinionated defaults in terms of what languages and libraries to use, how to do async programming. So all the developers are free from all these lower level um, decisions and again, they can uh, straight away work with um, uh, the business logic. And then the platform also provides tools which are needed for majority of the developers, you know, depending on what kind of applications they want to write. And there is a large community around the platform so that they can learn from each other, uh, discover how things are done, find patterns and reuse code and um, things like that. And it's also, you know, if you look at all the different stakeholders, um, not just the developers. Developers really love it because they just straight away write business logic. They don't have to think about anything else. But from data architecture perspective, it gives a standard way to uh, create APIs. Um, the contract first development that we encourage, make sure that every function has a well-defined contract and well-defined open API spec for it that is discoverable. And uh, uh, data architects take this advantage to standardize how do we expose and write APIs across different lines of business. And uh, uh, you know, it's a place for them to uh, do API management and governance. InfoSec, a single plane of control, a single point of enforcement for all the different authentication, authorization we want to do, auditing that we want to do. Uh, I find really what APIs are running in the company. And from an SRE perspective, observability out of the box. So, Every team don't have to think about how do I solve my logging and metrics and what, you know, for, for any other concerns that they have. Uh, it's the same uh, technology and tools and dashboards and alerting they can use across the board. Um, so it has been very successful. It's quite mature at this point of time. Um, and what makes it tick? Really the uh, the, USP of this platform, right? First thing is uh, the cold start problem, right? Any functional service uh, platform needs to think about this. And our functions are small packages of code. They are not full-on containers. Uh, they, we, when we deploy a function, we deploy into a running container. So if you take Java example, it's a small jar that only has that business logic and the libraries used by that function and that runs into a runtime, that is deployed into a runtime. So cold start is, uh, you know, compared to a container-based system, it's uh, significantly improved with, uh, with this platform. And the other two go hand in hand, uh, really speaking. Um, if you think about any large uh, enterprise, applications are owned by different lines of business, different teams, 
and everybody, each team manages their own application. They deploy it and they manage it, they run it, they scale it in their own space. So when you need to write a cross-cutting journey that goes from application to application, lines of business uh, uh, are notwithstanding, to call from one application to another application or to from API to another API owned by different teams, you have to leave the box, you have to go across the wire, uh, make API calls over the network. And this also puts some limitations on how best we can leverage uh, infrastructure because it's all at an application level. What we do with this platform, we blur those lines of lines of business and application ownership, bring all the functions into the same platform. And we can use the intelligence in the platform to find out and co-locate functions that depend on each other so that function to function calls are super optimized. They don't hit the network. And uh, this also gives us an opportunity to pack functions a lot more you know, with a higher density than what we can do if you are artificially dividing it by lines of business. So function packing, function co-location uh, are really the USPs of this platform. And what, uh, I have some numbers here, but really, you know, this is one of the platforms that unifies a lot of developers. So uh, I think it's, it's probably the biggest single way of developing applications in the company, so that when developers move from team to team, they're productive on day one because they can bring their expertise of how to develop applications and take it to the next team without having to learn new ways of doing things. And what do we want to do next with this? Um, we wanted to see, right now I talked about Java, Kotlin, JavaScript, TypeScript. Uh, some teams want to develop in Go. And some teams want to develop in Python because that is their first language. That's what they do all their other applications in. And uh, I want to be able to do this without having to write new runtimes for every language that people are asking me for. And that's where we thought WASM really helps with uh, this polyglot nature. I want to increase the function density. While we are, uh, we are, we are packing a lot of functions in one, uh, one part, each function still has some common libraries that I can extract it out. Uh, and that makes the function even smaller and be able to pack more functions in, but do it responsibly. Meaning, make sure that functions don't step on each other and that's when the WASM awesome sandboxing, uh, uh, strong sandboxing helps with the isolation. And language interoperability is a bonus. Um, we were not looking for it. Today when I talk, when a Java function needs to talk to a JavaScript function, on the wire it has to go and in a format, like a text-based format like JSON today. And uh, with WASM's language interoperability with components, I can do this in a lot more efficient manner with WRPC and that uh, that's really promising. And we, when we started exploring this earlier this year, we started with a custom runtime built on uh, WASM time. And then we started seeing we are doing a lot of heavy lifting that should be common in the community. And that's when we kind of discovered WASM, WASM Cloud. Uh, and now we are building our runtime around WASM Cloud, uh, leveraging all the functionalities that WASM Cloud has to offer. Uh, two things, key things I want to talk about WASM Cloud that we really like are the capability providers uh, and what that lets us do. WASM, there are only certain types of workloads you can run on WASM today. Uh, no async support, for example, just yet. Uh, uh, and uh, the, things like, for example, if you are talking multiple WASM components are talking to a database, if you want to do connection pooling at a higher level, you have to do it outside of the module, or outside of the component. And that's when I think the capability providers concept in WASM Cloud really shines. And there is a lot of opportunity here um, that we are looking at to see how multiple functions we can optimize further the database connections and uh, uh, thereby the performance. So this is early, to be honest, for, we just started this year and uh, with partnership with WASM Cloud uh, team. Um, we've made, I think, a lot of progress. Um, but what we also want to see is, you know, we are not there yet. We don't have this in production. We are in early days. And uh, 
but the way we are thinking about the WASM components and how we can layer in platform, I, for those of you who were in our talk yesterday, we went into some of the details on how platform components are layered over uh, a business logic specific function component. And uh, uh, that's super promising to me. We'll see how that pans out as we you know, kind of put it in production and uh, gain some real world experience. Um, also, just as an ecosystem, I think just the last six months, we have seen so much growth and improvement in the maturity of uh, the Wasm Cloud and the ecosystem around it. Uh, but I think there is a long way to go. And for me, the focus is not using the technology. The focus is enabling the developers as a platform to write idiomatic programs in the language of their choice and do it in such a way that I can support multiple languages with uh, you know, low burden on the platform uh, as well, platform team. And um, while I like the technology, maybe not popular, but I have to say, you know, it's hard to get people to write mission critical business applications on WASI 0.2 preview version. Just, it doesn't inspire confidence in people who are not in the, uh, in the community. So, uh, and definitely, you know, uh, I was very excited to hear uh, Luke's talk yesterday about what's coming up in, Opo, or, you know, 0 0.3 preview again. Um, so I think to get real enterprise adoption and get people to write super critical applications on this, the, the appearance of, you know, the stability of the interfaces that we are building on top is also very important. Um, and I think we hope to work with the community to get it to a stage where we can confidently go and say, hey, we like, as a platform team, we like this technology, and you can trust us to run your mission critical applications on this. So there's work to do. We are here. We want to work with the community and make this happen.